Hello everybody and welcome back to another one of those Community Fortress videos. This one was sent in by Sierra, which means it's a second s a submission from the same user, but it's something kind of unique that we haven't done yet on this show, so I think it's worth showing. This is the Fortress of Gang Canyon, of the works of reflecting of the taut rack. Now, if you would like to send in a uh, fortress for me to have a peek at, please do that via my Discord in the DF Save Sharing Room. Simply upload the, f the fortress save file to the uh, file sharing service of your choice, or alternatively directly to the Discord in a zipped format. If it's of heavy modded save make sure that you include your mods folder as well just a copy of your mods folder will do just fine so i have the best chances of loading it i've had some issues trying to load modded saves keep that in mind yes graphical mods included now if uh once once you've done that just just send it off and give me permission make sure that it lists somewhere in there that i can use the save file and if you want optimal chances of me having a peek leave a little write-up about the fortress itself as well as some screenshots then i'm much more likely to give it a look now since we're here uh, let's take a closer look at this fortress. Now you're gonna pretty quickly notice this is a rather small embark, and that's why I'm taking a look at this. I don't think I've seen one of these in this version of the game. For a while there, there was a little trend in the, amongst the Dwarf Fortress community of doing air quotes micro embarks, where you simply set it down to the smallest possible tile size and build a fortress with that. This leads to, well, sieges showing up literally on your front doorstep, and forces the player to design things in, let's just say, not very logical fashions. Uh, you end up building very boxy and very tall and very vertical and nowhere near as uh, standard as you would normally see. This is a very good biome. Uh, so if we scroll around, these are walnut trees around the edges. Uh, wood is, of course, very scarce in an area like this. And it looks like there's a peach-faced love lovebird lady there, as well as a fluffy wambler lying on a pile of vomit and blood. Very, very typical for fluffy wambler behavior. behavior. I swear, those things are evil. Now, down here, we can see that we have an archery range as well as two full barrackses. Now, the way you make archery ranges work, and they've actually got this set up correctly, is make sure that your ammo dump has no bins allowed, and make sure that only one type of ammo is allowed in that ammo dump. Otherwise, they will not be able to refill their ammunition. They're only able to do one ammo type at a time. Another thing here that I would just like to note is kind of a mistake, is I would have built a solid wall behind these instead of fortifications, because as you can see, some of these bolts are getting stuck. Um, you're never going to get those out unless you deconstruct and reconstruct the fortifications. One layer down, you can see uh, an extension to that barracks with two squads assigned. We can move down a little further, and this is the farming layer. Now, the in order to get into the fortress itself, uh, you have to go down to this layer, where there are two separate entryways, one uh, lined with traps and one that is just a direct route in where you can trade. Um, and then, of course, there's bedrooms for the military. You're going to need to be very specific about your military in a fort like this. Then as we go down, you can see there's a big hole and uh, four separate uh, areas where you can move traverse up and down. We can move down a little further, move down a little further, and we can see they are abusing... A light aquifer uh, for the form uh, or for the use of fountains and thus showering your citizens. Here's our tomb layer, or at least the first one, as well as uh, an interesting dungeon setup filled with cages instead of chains. I feel like cages are a little bit inhumane, but you know, you do you. Then we've got coffins around the edges, as well as um, plenty of tables and floodgates. I guess they were crafting in here at one point. Then as we go a little further down, uh, we start hitting some interesting rooms. We got these massive bedrooms around the edges of these. Hugely valuable. I'm assuming because looking at the sprites, it looks like it's just for dwarves that are in the military, or at the very least of some point of stature, I would assume. And then here, of course, is a dining room. As we move a little further down, we can see our hospital, which is very well appointed with everything that a hospital needs, including wells for cleaning wounds. More bedrooms and air, or more more bedrooms, and then also some dining rooms and a few tombs around the edges. It's an interesting pattern design. I wonder if they did this with macros or with like just the the normal uh, dig out style. And then down here, at the bottom, we we have some water sources as well as more of these bedrooms around the edges. This is where a lot of crafting is getting done. Down here is the. Uh, the Harvest of Constructs, a public tavern, uh, including more wells as well as more of those uh, pretty, um, what, what, what's it called? Uh, 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 mist generators, there we go. And uh, they're using a well design that they used in their last fort, which is just this, I'm gonna leave the game pause now, which is just this um, very deep kind of uh, multi-stacked well setup, which like I never thought about making wells go through wells to make more wells. It's a neat way of doing things. I, I, I'd never really contemplated it before. Uh, continuing down, not too much more to say here until we get to another crafting layer. Down here, we've got clothing as well as some kilns. 
And then once again, not too much more to say, these layers appear to be mostly under construction, but just a really interesting, and at least for this series, a very unique fortress. Um, I gotta say, this is a hell of a lot better than the, the first one they submitted, which I think was actually their first ever fortress, which was the second fortress I did in this series. And I just wanna say, this is a massive improvement. Everything here is significantly cooler looking. This is kind of a drainage layer, which I would actually be farming on this layer, uh, because this is very, very good fertile soil. Then we get down to the cavern layers, which are of course interesting, because, you know, it's so small. Small, and then we can just keep going down and see the rest of the map as it has been discovered. We can go through this cavern layer, down through the next cavern layer, I'm assuming. Yep, there's that final cavern layer, that very small cramped area full of dead things, as well as um, a forgotten beast who looks very happy. Uh, kick. Uh, and uh, let's just see what this forgotten beast is. It is an enormous iguana with lidless eyes and thin wings of stretched skin, and it undulates rhythmically. Uh, its red purple scales are jagged and close set. Beware its webs. Ooh, that's terrifying. That's why there's so many dead bodies in there. Uh, and then as we get down, we can eventually get down to the magma sea with a interesting zone uh, encrusted with gems and a big old arrow pointing up. Diamonds, I suppose. But uh, that brings us to the bottom of this fortress, so now we can jump back up to the top and just say, if you would like to see more interesting fortress designs, or maybe a fortress you haven't seen before, this is a really quick one because of how compact it is, but uh, if you would like to see more videos like this about fortresses sent in by the community, you can check out this YouTube channel, there's a growing playlist of them. I don't have too much to say about this one because it just seems kind of neat. Just seems kind of neat. Maybe you want to do a micro fortress. Maybe you want to do a full size fortress. Maybe this isn't your shtick. Let me know down in the comments section. And if you would like to see more videos like this, check out the YouTube channel, as I said previously. If you want to see my face while I play video games on the internet, go to twitch.tv slash blindirl uh, for my face while I play Dwarf Fortress. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.